The pitch that I originally made to the network was that the show would start as a traditional SBS mini appearing to be a serious drama and that it would get crazier and crazier and crazier until like by episode three it's sort of like this totally bonkers, uh, very different show to the one you started watching. The Unusual Suspects is a female-driven crime caper set in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. It starts with a $16 million necklace has been stolen from a house in Vaucluse and it's the story of how a group of women from vastly different walks of life come together to ensure that justice is served. We've been robbed! Everyone You'd be stupid enough to steal from Roxanne Waters. First and foremost is that it's about a story that I'm very familiar with. It's about the, um, the story of the Filipino maids or domestic workers. There's about three million uh, domestic workers all around the world from the Philippines. I know people, my mum has friends who are domestic helpers and I just know this story. And that's what jumped out at me because I, that's not been talked about fully really. And I was so excited that I would be part of that. Uh, storytelling because I know that that story. Is that right, Miss? The show was always written especially for the SBS format, the mini series, the four by one hour, because it's a very difficult form. It's um, you have to do everything that you do in a TV series, but you have to do it really fast. So by the end of episode one, you not only have to sort of bring a whole constellation of characters and this world to life, but you have to be 25% of the way through your whole story. Well, what's that? You're, you're breaking up. I can't hear. I'm oozing you. Go on tomorrow. I think what was always special about it was the tone. It was always supposed to be really brassy and big and silly and fun. We just wanted it to be different to a lot of the other SBS um, minis that had been made to date. Bye, Lana. Filming during the pandemic, lots of, you know, COVID protocols. We had to get tested every week and wear masks when we're rehearsing, which I found really disconcerting because, you know, you look at the face when you're acting with people. But we had to do that. So there are amazing locations in the show and I have no idea how they pulled some of them off, to be honest with you. Our locations manager, Michelle Williams, did all of that work. I know that we had some really hairy things happen along the way. We lost Roxanne's house, I think, a week before we were going to shoot there and had to rewrite the scripts frantically with this new location. And it always worked out for the best. It really did. Every time we thought something terrible happened on this show, it always ended up being this like amazing gift to the production in some strange way. While I was filming it, I had a lot of time when I was thinking about those people working as domestic helps overseas and being away from their family. and. It made, it opened my heart and I hope that people also would be kinder, you know, if they meet those people because the, the suffering and also the, um, it's made me kind of teary. <laughs> they, they suffer being away from their family. <laughs> it's making me emotional. Yeah, and that they spare a thought to them and um, it will make them more open and kind to those people if ever they, they meet those people. When has it ever happened? I think it's the first time that we're seeing four Filipino women on a major TV series. It just means that I'm living in a society now where people are interested to hear those stories. And also on a deeper level, it means that the society I'm living in is actually becoming more open, more tolerant, and not only more, more tolerant, but uh, embracing of different cultures. And again, on a deeper level, it means a kinder society and I'm excited about that. <laughs>